Having data to test is very important. Whether you want to create unit tests that better replicate the real world, or you want to insert sample data in the database so that you can see how a full database will look with your application. The key is to have representative data without spending a lot of time generating it. That's where the bogus library comes in. This open source NuGet package allows us to quickly generate fake data that can be used for any number of purposes in our application or our database. In this video, we're going to look at how quickly we can spin up an application that makes use of fake data that is generated by bogus. Let's jump right into our code. Now we're going to build out a Blazor application for this so we can see the, the generated code right on the screen. So let's create a Blazor app and we're going to use or call this um, bogus data app. So bogus data and bogus data app. And if you want the source code for this, this is .NET 7. Uh, if you want the source code for this, there's a link down in the description. You can get this source code emailed to you. Um, but let's go through. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on dependencies and manage NuGet packages. And we're going to browse for bogus. And with 41.3 million downloads as of the recording of this video, that's quite a bit. And it's used very useful in the community. Uh, it's used quite often. So let's see how to actually use this. Now, I want to point out that right now with this template, Microsoft already has created some, let's call it bogus data, some bad data, um, some sample data, I guess is a better way of saying that. And they do that in this weather forecast service where they say, okay, we've got this, um, this array, string array, and then they generate from one to five a date plus, you know, plus one days, and then a, a temperature in Celsius that's randomized, and then a summary that's based upon the, um, a, a random summary from this list. So that's just kind of their way of generating sample data very quickly. But there's better ways of doing this using the bogus library, which we'll see. So first, let's create a, a new, uh, well, we're going to call it a class, but it's actually going to be a record. So let's call this um, person model. And I'm going to put a semicolon at the end of my namespace for a file scope namespace. And I'm going to say public record person model. We'll get rid of the curly braces and just um, do our parentheses and say int ID string first name. We're going to give us quite a few things to play around with, um, different types of data that you might see in a real person object. And we can go from there and kind of extrapolate as you, as you need, but this will allow you to kind of see the different things it can do. So string last name, um, string email, and let's, um, let's start putting these on new lines because otherwise we're going to uh, have way too many. And we'll put a um, semicolon at the end of that, but then we'll keep going here. After email address, let's have string phone. And if you've never dealt with a record before, records are, are classes that have additional stuff on top. And so one of the things is, is this structure for creating a record is much cleaner and simpler than your auto properties would be. And yet it does something very similar, not the same, but similar. I have a whole video on records if you want to watch that. Street address, string city. And yes, if you're watching this and looking at the naming convention, normally a method would not have capitalized the first letter of each word, but with records, we do capitalize the first letter because it's actually in a property. String state, string zip code. And then I'm going to have one more that we're not ready for yet. We need to create a new, I'll say new um, class, but really we're going to use this um, just for enums. If you have a, a small, a small um, project, sometimes it's easiest just to have a place for one place for all enums rather than trying to put them in different places. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to say this is public enum, uh, whoops, lowercase, credit rating. All right, so we're going to have our credit rating enum. 
And let's start with excellent and then go to good, average, poor, and terrible. And this will allow us to have just another data type to play with. So let's uh, save this and go back to person model. And we will say uh, credit rating. And we'll say just rating. So this allows us to play with a noom and see how do you, you know, generate a random credit rating off for this record. So with that, uh, we now have our, our person model created. Let's go over to imports statement real quick. And we'll add a using for bogus data dot uh, data. Now, if you're seeing this and you're looking at, you know, I'm, I'm going very quickly through the Blazor stuff. And if you look at that and going, uh, Tim, I don't know what's going on with Blazor. Um, I need to understand better about Blazor. I have a whole course on that. I also have uh, videos here on YouTube. Um, introducing Blazor Server and Blazor WebAssembly and, and using Blazor uh, quite a bit. But I also have a course, uh, uh, Blazor Server from start to finish, that'd be very helpful as well if you want to go to imtimcorey.com. Okay, so let's create one more in the data folder. This will actually be a class. So there's a first time for everything, right? Uh, let's go with data generator. And this will generate our data for us. So let's put a semicolon here. And we do want to add a, um, a using directive for bogus here. And so we call this bogus data. So that's kind of probably stepped on a little bit of toes, um, just as far as your understanding. Sorry about that. But um, bogus data is the name of our, our project. And bogus data app is a solution. But bogus itself is that library that we added. So just kind of so we're clear there. All right, I'm going to start off before I put something in a method, I'm going to say faker person model. And we'll call this person model fake. All right, I'm going to show you this does in just a minute. And we're going to say constructor. So what this will do is it will it will um, have it will hold the information for generating a fake record for person model. We're going to create that right now. The rules for generating a fake user. We're going to do this in the constructor of this class. So the first thing we'll do is say randomizer dot seed equals new random. We're going to give a starting value of one, two, three. And I want to highlight this because this is something that you don't have to do. But because I am saying the seed value is this new random instance and I'm giving it a seed number, I can replicate the results. That means that every time I run this, it will generate the same results. So that if I were doing this in unit testing, I would know what those results are and I could count on them being the same every single time. That can be very, very helpful. It can also be helpful for tracking down bugs or, you know, if, if you have um, something fail on the data and you're not doing a great job of capturing or logging what the data was, then you might not know why did it fail. Or better yet, if you run through something that fails and then you, you think you fixed it, you can just run this again and it should succeed because it's giving the exact same data. If you have different data every time, it might succeed the second time without you changing anything because it didn't introduce that specific scenario that caused the problem. So this way saying, hey, this is what we're gonna start with. We know that every time we run this application, the first record will be identical as the last time we ran this application. Now, if you get future records, meaning that's only if it's, um, each record will be different, it's just that there'll be the same different ones um, from application run to application run. I'm gonna demonstrate this in a little bit so you can kind of see more clearly how all of it will be different um, inside of one run of the application because they go on to the next random value, the next random value. But starting from the same random value allows us to have a consistent pattern in that. Okay, I'll again, I'll show you that in a little bit, but let's say person, Oops, person model fake equals 
new faker person model, but don't put a semicolon at the end. So we're gonna hit enter and say rule four. We're gonna say U stands for user. Doesn't, you can choose whatever letter you want. U dot ID. What this says is, hey, we're gonna apply this rule to the ID property inside the person model. And the rule is going to be, we'll give it F for the fake. And we're gonna say F dot random dot int. And we'll say from zero, one to eh, 10,000 is good. So what this says is, hey, for your, your ID value, just give me a random number from one to 10,000. Now, if you were trying to generate something for a database, you probably wouldn't give an ID at all because the database would generate that ID for you. But maybe you do want to overwrite the database and have a consistent ID every time. Well, you could use this, but you might have conflicts with more than one thing using the same identifier. If that's the case and if that's a problem, then you'd have to remember the ID to use outside of this generator and kind of keep track. So this doesn't keep track of what it has generated already uh, without some help. And that's a good thing is it's, it's a lot of um, cost and time saving when it comes to your application running quickly. But on the other hand, if you need to keep track of things, you have to be the one that builds that. And you can create uh, a rule or a way of doing that inside of, um, inside of Bogus, but by default, it doesn't come with those kind of things to remember. Okay, so that's the first thing. That's the first rule. But now we're gonna say rule four. We're gonna follow the same pattern. Patterns are good. First name, we're gonna say f, f dot name dot first name. And this comes from Bogus. So what it says is Bogus has a whole set of things for name. So if you do control J here, Name is just one of the, or first name is one of the, just one of the things. You have job area, job type, random, uh, full name. You also have last name, locale, prefix, suffix, and so on. So um, this has a lot of different options for name. If you control J here, you'll see we have name as high level categories, name, address, commerce, company, database, date, uh, finance, hacker, hash IDs, uh, image, and many, many other things, including lorem text, so lorem ipsum text. Uh, lots of different things you could generate out of this. And these are you know, high level categories like music. And then inside there, you can find other things. I haven't played around with music, but um, things related to music. But in this case, name, first name, which if we did first name, you can probably guess that for last name, we're going to do, let's come back here. Last name, there we go, have autofill. So we can do last name, but then what about the next one, which is rule four, and we'll say you, you dot email. Well, for that, we're actually gonna pass in two objects, F, or two parameters, F and U, which yes, Great combination, right? Um, but this stands for both the, the faker object as well as the user object. So with that, we can say f.internet.email, and email can take in nothing like it's doing here, or we can say u.firstname and u.lastname. And this will use the first name and last name in the email address. So it might say tim.corey at, I don't know, yahoo.com or gmail.com or whatever. So that allows us to generate a little bit more um, common types of email addresses instead of just random email addresses entirely. All right, next up, let's say rule four. And again, we're gonna say U and the arrow key and U dot phone. And we'll say F and we'll say F dot phone dot phone number. And there's different ways you can format that. We're just gonna say, hey, give me a phone number. Doesn't really matter for us, just gives a phone number. And then another rule for U 
u.street address. F, you're probably getting the hang of this by now, f.address.street address. And we can copy this and paste it a couple more times. We can say city, state, and zip code. And come over here and say city. State and zip code. I'm pulling that list, by the way. If I if I double click on this and hit Control J, it drops down the the, the fill list. I can complete this the IntelliSense list um, again without having to back through and come back again. Um, so, oh, and by the way, this state I don't want state. I actually want state abbreviation. So let's just get the two letter state abbreviation there. And then one more last one is rule four, u, u dot rating. So how do you do this? Well, it's actually quite simple. F dot pick random credit rating. So I said, hey, pick a random this val this enum. So when you pick a random, you just give it passing what enum type you want to get a random of and it does it for you. So we have now established a uh, the way to create a fake person model. Now, we haven't created a fake person model. We've just established a way of doing that. And we've done that in our constructor so that when we instantiate this class, it does it once, it sets the seed, and it creates the, uh, the fake person generator, but we haven't actually generate a person yet. So let's create a method, public person model, generate person. And here we're going to return person model fake dot generate. That's all we're gonna do. It's gonna generate one fake person. So we can try us out right now. Let's um, let's go over to Solution Explorer. Let's go down to program.cs and add this to our um, add this to our dependency injection. So builder dot services dot add transient for the data generator. And yes, I did not create a interface with this. I'm just gonna throw it right in. Normally I would. You normally wanna have interfaces for your dependency injection because it makes it easier with unit testing to swap out the implementations very quickly. It also allows you to later down the road, swap out your implementations inside of dependency injection and say, hey, give this implementation instead of that one. And you can change your entire app from one line of code. But for this, we're just gonna leave us as so. And let's come over to our pages and go to the index page. And let's inject, which uses dependency injection. Again, got a whole course on this as well as videos on YouTube. Um, inject data generator. And we'll call this just data. And then what we can do is um, let's get rid of the prompt here in, in this. And we're just going to say uh, at data dot generate person and then say to string. That's it. We're just going to print this value out. This is one of the reasons why I use the record because we can just print this out and see the JSON value for this. So let's run this. Let's wait for it to, to build and run the first time. And what we'll see when we load this up is that it blows up. Um, you know why? No parameters constructor defined. Interesting. So let's look at this. I think it has a problem with the fact I'm using a record, but um, I have used a record with this. So let's go over to our person model. I'm gonna change this over. And instead of um, boring you with the details of it, I'll just do it manually. Um, I'll copy and paste from an example I have. So I'm gonna, change this over to what looks like a class, but it's the same thing. 
It's just in class form, but I have the getters and the setters. So yes, I'm kind of cheating here because records shouldn't have setters because records shouldn't be changeable. Um, they should have init here, which um, this system doesn't like. Uh, but because I'm doing it this way, which really, what this really is a class, and I just turned it over to me to record. But by having it this way, we can kind of cheat the system, make it, this a little easier to display quickly. So this is definitely a shortcut just for doing it on video. But um, this will allow us to, hey, it does work. Um, there we go. So that is our data. So notice the first name is Sydney, last name is Roberts, Sydney Roberts one at hotmail.com, phone number, street address, um, and zip code rating, credit rating is terrible. Now I wanna show you something. If I close this out and I were to run this again, which person do you think we're gonna get? Well, we're gonna get Sydney Roberts again all the data is still the same. So that's what I mean by the fact that because I use that seed value, I can predict which record will get generated. Now, if I were to come down here and let's um, cut this out and put it instead of a, uh, a paragraph tag so we can make this a little more separate from each other, but I could create, um, how about four records? Will they all be Sydney? Well, no, because they the first one is always going to be Sydney, and the second one is always going to be Jeremy, and the third one is going to be Adela, and the fourth one is going to be Cleora. Um, so if we run this again, and I know well, I'm kind of beating this to a you know dead horse, but um, I do want you to make sure you understand that same four people, Sydney, Jeremy, Adela, and Cleora. Um, same four people, but you know this second person is not the same as the first person. So inside of your application, it will always generate new data every time you ask for it. But this way you have a known good starting point that you can replicate over and over and over again. So let's do a little bit of replication here. We wanna generate multiple records, not just one. So let's go over and create, let's create a new page that we can uh, play around with. So let's right click and say, add razor component. And we're gonna say, let's call this people. And this will be a list of people that we display. So we're gonna say at page equals, or not, no, no equals, sorry, uh, slash people. And just before we forget, let's go to our shared and go to navigation menu. And I'm not gonna be all cutesy about this. I'm just going to copy and paste the last thing and say people. And over here is um, load people. So I'm going to keep the the icon the same. I have you looked up an icon for this. That's okay. That's not what we're focused on here on. And we're going to inject the data generator again. We call it data. And in here, let's create a table. Now, if you've used um, HTML4, you know, we grew up in the, let's let's say 2000s building HTML. We used to use tables a lot because it was a layout thing. We don't use tables for layouts anymore, but we do use them for data, which is what we're doing here. So I'm using bootstrap style here to make this look a little nicer. And then I'm going to create a T head and inside here, I'm gonna create a T row and a TH. We'll create multiple of these. So there's an ID and we'll copy it and paste it a few times. First name, last name, email, phone, street address, city, state, zip, and credit rating. So first name, last name, email, phone, street address, city, state, zip code, and credit rating. Okay, so there is our 
our list of things we'll display. Now we'll come back to the, well, let's go to T body and just create just T body. But we're gonna come back to actually uh, generating that. We have to come down to our code and actually have something to display. So list of person model, people, I can spell, equals new. And we're gonna have a private void load data method. And in here we're gonna say var results equals um, data dot generate person like so. And then we're gonna say people dot add results. And then we'll create a button here. Type equals button and the class equals btn, btn dash outline. Uh, let's go with outline primary. And then on click equals load data. And we're gonna say load more data. And yes, the first time we run through this we won't have any data, but again, demo, real quick. So we have now something to display. So let's come up here in our T body and say at for each. And we're gonna say var p in people. And inside here, for every person in the list, we're gonna say tr, and then we'll say td, and we'll say at p dot id. And again, we're gonna copy this first name, last name, email, phone, street address, city, state, zip, and rating. So first name, last name, email, phone, street address, city, state, zip code and rating. So that's gonna give us a record for every person in the list, which starts off as empty. So let's run this again, and we're gonna see how we can push this button over and over again to generate these people. Now I already have this loading, but let's go to our load people list and say load more, there's Sydney's first. Notice. Sydney's first, why is Sydney first again? Because Sydney was first up here. Well, when we ask for this data generator, it's a transient. So that means every time you ask for it, you get a new instance of it. So this page gets a different instance than this page does. So every time you click the button, we get one more person added to the list. Cool, and they're all different. And there's a lot of different random data in here in how it looks. However, this is not terribly efficient. There are better ways of doing this because right now what we're doing is saying, hey, you know, run this generate person individually. There is a different way of doing this that is even better. Let's close out all this other stuff and go to our data generator. And down here, let's create a new method. Public, I enumerable of type person model. We'll say generate people. And in here we're gonna return person model fake dot generate forever. This is pretty cool. What does generate forever mean? It means just what it says it means. We're gonna generate this thing forever. As, as long as you wanna run it, we can run it, which is a little crazy, uh, to think about, but it, it does do so very, very efficiently. So right now we just have this var results equals generate person. We're gonna change this to generate, okay, it is there, um, generate people. And I am gonna say, I'm gonna limit this because you can just have it keep going and going and going and going. Every time you ask for the next value in the enum, it will give it to you. 
However, I'm going to say let's take, and for sake of argument, let's just say 10. And this will just automatically generate for me 10 on the fly. And then we're going to get rid of this line here and say for each, we're going to say var result in results. And we'll say people dot add result. Now we could also just say, um, we could also say, let's go down here and do it. Uh, people dot add range and say results. So these two things, this versus this, uh, functionally the end result is the same. So we'll, we'll just clear out that, but just note that both, um, it, that's what it's doing is it's adding this set. And again, I couldn't just say, hey, generate the people and then put the results in. I have to do this, take 10. Otherwise, it's going to run forever. But with 10, if we run this now, and we come over here and say load people, we say load more is loaded 10 for us, and 10 more, and 10 more, and now you have a lot of data added. And if you want to go crazy, you could say, hey, I don't want 10, I want 100 at a time. And you run this, and it's going to give you 100 people at a time. So let's come over here, load people, load more. There's the first 100. And if you get to the end, no problem, load 100 more, and so on. You can generate as much data as you want. So this now has quite the list of data with just a couple of bucket button clicks. You could just load whatever number you want that you know that you might um, be interested in, or you can keep going until a, a condition is met besides just the number. So this is how you can load data for display. For example, you could just say, hey, generate this much data. In fact, this is what Microsoft is doing with this weather forecast service, but doing so manually. Instead of doing this manually, we could have taken this over and generated it like we are doing for the person model. And even with a simple one, we could have done something like this, but had you know a couple of rules is all it need to generate the weather forecast data for us. We could generate it instead of just five, we could generate as many as you want and even have more interesting ranges or more interesting data associated with, with that weather forecast. So there's a lot you can do there um, with generating this data and generating sets of data instead of just one record, we can generate multiple. Now, this is great for displaying on your user interface to see how it might look with data in it for trying things out with actual data. You could hook this up like it's a database. You could say, hey, instead of asking the database for our data, essentially you're just doing this instead, but it looks like it came from the database. And now you have data to display on the page. And if you use the, the seed, which we're doing right here, if you use a seed, pick whatever number you want, but that way you can recreate it over and over again and it looks correct. And then you can just change it. You know, So if you decide, hey, you know what? I want to change the seed to see new data or take it off entirely to see um, how it might look every time you run it if it's different. But that's one way to use this. Another way of using this is with unit testing. So you can, again, use, this is important here, to use the seed for unit testing. And then you can generate some fake data to run through your system to make sure that it correctly handles good and bad data. Data that's inside the range and outside the range of what's expected. You could also generate this data using something like this and generating a, a certain number and then insert it into the database. You could use, for example, Dapper. You could just say, per record, insert this, or you can do a bulk insert and insert lots of records all at once using Dapper to um, install hundreds or thousands of records into your database to have a startup for your database. Maybe you're, you know what, you want to generate a, a random set of data for your database quite quickly. Well, this is the way you're doing this with all of your different models. And if you seed it, like this, then you can generate the same sample database over and over again, or you can change the seed to have different sample databases. So lots of stuff you can do with this random data, but this allows you to really test your application out, see how it works 
without having to type in a whole bunch of fake data and trying to make it look right and you know maybe forgetting about certain things. Now, I've shown you a lot of different techniques here from random integers to picking a random enum to grabbing different types of values from their list, including uh, email addresses that take in account into account the first and last name of the user. There's lots more you can do with Bogus. And there's a lot more you can do as far as how you structure Bogus. But this gives you a good starting point. If you go to their, uh, their GitHub repository, you can see a lot more examples of how to use Bogus to generate any kind of fake data you want and how to set it up appropriately. All right, so I hope that's helpful. I hope that you found this valuable. Um, let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are on Bogus and if you've used it, what you use it for and, and how you like to use it. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.